What's going on everyone? Talon here and welcome to another character rank up video. Alright, so as you can see X23 is now available here through the event battle. Uh, so I went through it the first day when it came out or after the update dropped. Um, so I did clear all of them for the initial clear bonuses. So we do have some bios from her. And then I went ahead and did the first one here again um, after the reset and just going through the first one, I was only able to get her bios one time out of the, uh, uh, what is it, eight battles that we do? Or is it more than that? I think it was eight battles. Um, out of the eight battles, it wasn't too bad. We got uh, three bios to drop. And then on the very first time when I went through, I only got one time. Uh, I only got her bios to drop once going through all uh, four stages. And it was only one uh, bio. So that was a little... Uh, a little disappointing if that's going to be kind of how things play out each time these uh, four missions here reset uh, because so far after going through um, a whole rotation once and then just the first stage here a second time I've managed to only get four additional bios from her so hopefully they won't be that hard to get but anyway let's go ahead and jump in here to uh, x23 so we are going to be ranking her up today of course so first of all we're going to um, get her to tier two or tier two, get her to rank two. And then I'm going to be using rank up tickets uh, for the rest of the way. So we're going to go ahead and use 20 bios here, get her ranked up. All right, there we go. And now we should be able to do, uh, to go the rest of the way with uh, tickets. Yeah. So here we go. We got a three star ticket. I'm saving my mega rank up ticket. I don't know, just, just because I always like to have one laying around and I happen to have enough of the regular tickets to just rank her up this way. So I figured, why not? Let's clear out a little bit of inventory space, especially these five-star ones. I need to figure out who, um, some people to use these on because I have too many five-star ones. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and rank her up there. And then the last step here, we have just two of these rank uh, six-star rank up tickets. We are going to be getting one more from the uh, seven-day calendar reward. But let's go ahead and finish her off. So there we go. Got her ranked up to six stars. Now let's go ahead and work on the mastery because I've had these Emkron shards um, at max for a very long time now because I haven't really needed them for much uh, outside of Wolverine's uniform, I think is the only thing. And what the heck is that? Is there someone on my roof right now? Jeez. I don't know if you guys could hear that bang, but it sounds like something just dropped on my roof. Hmm. What the take a look at that after this uh, but anyway let's go ahead and finish getting her mastery worked on here okay one more to go and what was her mastery again oh yes yeah, the same as uh, Wolverine it decreases the debuff duration so I guess that's okay all right there we go got her finished up very nice um, all right, so now we're gonna work on her work on her gears and ISO 8 set here So I'll go ahead and roll those and then uh, cut back to when I finish All right, and we are back so I went ahead and just put her gears to 15 right now um, For her skills I leveled up the first skill because you do get increased uh, bleed damage from that it went from 5% to 30% and then I also leveled up her fourth skill because it is the same thing. It goes from 5% to 30% for bleed damage. So you can get a little extra damage out that way. Um, besides that, none of the other skills need to be leveled up. Um, she has one. She has a stun on her third skill. And that was all, right? Uh, yeah, so it looks like that was all. And then, of course, she has the Wolverine type passive where health is below 99%. Uh, she's going to continually recover 5% of her HP, which is exactly the same as Wolverine, except that she also gets a all attack, all speed and crit rate bonus as well. That's going to be active, which is nice. So it'll help out her DPS. And since she is a speed character, um, that is going to be needed. So that's going to... Uh, Probably put her up on the top end of the speed characters in terms of DPS having that little bump right there. And she does have pretty high um, native attack stat as well um, when compared to other speed characters, that is. Uh, all right, so for the Ice Weight set here, um, I have Power the Angry Hulk. Pretty much just went with any attack base set I could get uh, because I pretty much rolled 
every set there is except for the three attack sets. Um, and this was the first one I got here was Power of the Angry Hulk. Um, Overdrive, of course, would be a nice uh, second place. But uh, depending on your cards, of course, if you need the skill cooldown, Hawk's Eye is still going to be valuable then if you need that to get to the max skill cooldown. Uh, but for me, I like having the um, attack speed because generally that's what I am uh, missing the most. So that is the Ice Await set. And now I thought it would be fun. So we have 124 for bio saved up here. So how lucky or unlucky uh, can I get when trying to level up her gear right here? Let's find out. So I'm hoping we can at least get all the gears to 17, um, which would be nice. We'll see how see how that goes because I've had some of these um, lower rolls here from like 16 to 17. I've had this be like 18 times for me before. I was like, what are you doing 18 times for level 16 to level 17? I was like, give me a break. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and even these out. So generally, you're going to see just between one and three times for these uh, first two steps here, which is which is good, so you don't waste too many bios for these first two uh, upgrades. But then it starts taking a whole ton of bios. Um, so, so far, not too bad. Ooh, nine times. That one is a little, that's a little rough for 16 to 17, if you ask me. Um, but I guess that's fine. You can take, uh, we got to take it. There's no choice. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? Two times. All right, cool. So now is when it starts costing some serious bios because it's two bios per. And let's see. I'm going to guess uh, that my luck is going to be mediocre on this one and it's going to be about 12 times. Ooh, 17. No, my luck was extremely bad because that's a really high roll. So it looks like we're probably not going to get all the gears to 18. How about you, 12? Oh, 7. Okay, so that evened out a little bit there. Uh, not too bad. We might get them all to 18, actually. Oh, one times. Okay, yes, we will. That was nice. Very lucky right there. So it looks like everything is balancing out from that first roll. Yeah, and then another 7. All right, so that's that seems about average overall. Um, so that's good. What do we got? 32 vials left. All right, let's see if we can get uh, 19. Go. Nope, 16 times. Definitely not getting there. Uh, that's generally how it goes. I usually get between um, between 15 to 23 um, when I'm going from 18 to 19. And then from 19 to 20, my personal average, of course, is quite high for that one. It's about 21. I hardly ever get anything below 20 times when I'm going from 19 to 20. There are of course a few exceptions. I have gotten lucky on a few characters and gotten like a two times and three times on that, but generally it doesn't happen too often. Um, all right, so there we go. We've got her gears leveled up and um, for the uh, custom gear here, I have not put an obelisk on her quite yet because I am still trying to decide if I want to put a to guard break on her because I'm thinking that she's really going to need immune to guard break since she doesn't have it built in naturally from what I saw. Yeah, there's no super armor on here. Um, but her two kind of most damaging looking skills, the fourth and fifth skill, uh, we can, actually we can just jump into the skill preview here, um, are iframes. So she doesn't seem like she could get guard broken out of it because they do seem like they're full iframes. Uh, but I kind of want to test her out in world boss a little bit here um, to see if I'm going to need that immune to guard break or not. So, her third skill right here has a delayed iframe, so she does a few hits there, um, and as soon as she kind of gets right up to the enemy, then you get your iframe, so that's nice. So she does have an iframe on the third skill, just kind of plan it out a little bit. Uh, the first skill is no iframe, but that is a bleed on there, as you can see, so that's the one that gives a 30% bleed. Uh, then we have the second skill here, which is pretty much the exact same as Wolverine's second skill. Is that his second skill where he dashes through? Um, I'm pretty sure it is. So it's pretty much the same as Wolverine's. Um, and then her fourth skill here is an iframe for the full skill, which is really nice. And it's a little bit reminiscent of Wolverine's um, fifth skill, where it just kind of hits a big area with a multiple amounts of slashes. Or you can just think of it as a bigger version of Wolverine's uh, fourth skill, because his fourth skill, where he just does the slash downwards, it kind of has that same kind of residual uh, slashing effect like that except X-23s here, or Lara's, seems to be a little more AoE, a little more wide range to it. And then if we look at the fifth skill here, it kind of looks like um, uh, Quicksilver's fourth skill with the ending part uh, looking like Wolverine's fifth skill. Because as you can see, it almost looks like she's just 
uh, dancing or dancing around the character and just uh, hitting them from all sides. So pretty much also like Punisher's uh, fifth skill once he has the Netflix uniform on, um, which is nice. But it is again a full iframe for this skill, um, and it looks like of course her fourth and fifth are going to have the main chunk of the damage. So that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to put an immune to guard break on her. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, but I kind of want to try her out in like extreme alliance battle to see if I'm going to need that Because uh, when you're fighting the frost beast, of course, he is extremely uh, skilled at uh, guard breaking you if it's possible to guard break you Which is quite annoying. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and actually try her out in some real fights now Okay, so here we are at uh, black dwarf I decided to go against black dwarf because um, I think he has quite a few skills that are um, guard breaking so it would probably be a good test because I don't think Proxima really has a lot of guard breaks uh, Ebony just teleports around all over the place, so he doesn't really guard break you um, Thanos just debuffs and stuns you. I guess he can guard break you uh, Quite a bit so I might do Thanos if I don't um, Kind of get the results that I want here um, But anyway, I'm going to be using this team here. So we have agent venom for his uh, leadership the 30% physical and then Red Hulk for the team up uh, bonuses and basically I just picked one of the teams that she had on the list here I didn't really um, Look too much into it. I just kind of scrolled down here and I was like who has a physical damage leadership uh, There we go. So we have the circle of four. Let's go ahead and grab that um, And then we get so physical attack recovery rate and crit rates from the team up bonus and then uh, Crit damage and ignore defense from the other one. So we do have some pretty good uh, bonuses there as well so let's go ahead and hop in here and see how X-23 plays in uh, World Boss. So I did go ahead and look at the character details before I went over to World Boss here. And we do have her at 48.5% uh, skill cooldown. So she's not quite maxed out, but she is very close. And I do have a lot of skill cooldown on my cards, actually, because I am currently in the process of trying to reroll one of my cards. Um or re-rolling a card to override a card that I already have equipped and that will lower my skill cooldown by uh, 5% but it'll give me a nice damage boost because all of my other characters are above cap and the reason for her low skill cooldown is actually she doesn't have skill cooldown on any of her gears so Hawkseye might actually be a good set for you if you don't have an abundance of um, skill cooldown from your cards so that is probably something you want to take into account. And there we go, her nice healing. Um, she has a lot of movement on her skills too, so pretty much the only time I see her really getting guard broken is using the first, uh, the first skill or in between on the uh, third skill, like when you first use it. So yeah, because she's got... A lot of iframes, you can pretty much chain those ones to the other. Yeah, so the first skill you can definitely get guard broken. Uh, the second skill has a lot of movement on it, so it is... Yeah, so it is pretty safe. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe I won't put skill uh, immune to guard break on her, because she does seem to be pretty, uh, doing pretty well without it. Alright, and what's the team up skill? Team up skill is... was that the 5th skill? Yeah, it's the 5th skill. Nice. It's a good team up uh, skill right there. So I quite like this team with her. Um, of course, damage isn't super high, but we are going against uh, Black Dwarf right now. She is still tier 1 and we have uh, no strikers, so that's probably why the damage seems a little bit low because she does have a pretty high um, attack stat. Ooh, we're gonna die here, aren't we? Yeah. All right, well, that's not too bad so far. Let's go ahead and back out of here. Um, so I kind of saw what I needed to see. I don't really think that guard break is going to be necessary for her, immune to guard break. Um, of course, I think it will help for things maybe like um, uh, PvP possibly, but she has so many iframes that depend on what skill she starts off with for like Alliance Conquest or something like that, what rotation the... Uh, AI uses with her, but she seems pretty safe because she has instant iframes on her fifth and fourth skill. Uh, she has a somewhat slow wind up on the third skill, but it is still pretty quick. Um, and then, of course, second skill has a lot of movement, so it's 
pretty much going to be hard to guard break her out of that skill or hit her out of it, but the first skill is the only one you really need to worry about. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to put something like a uh, recovery rate damage proc on her because I do like to have damage procs, but if I was going to build her towards PvP, of course, I would put a uh, invincibility obelisk on her with recovery rate as well to take advantage of her healing factor. Um, so, so far she's looking pretty good, so let's actually go ahead and jump into a Shadowland floor real fa uh, blah, 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 really fast. Okay, so I was on my way over to Shadowlands, and when I saw the Alliance Battle tab, and I was like, hmm, I was like, what is today? And I was like, oh, it is Speed Hero Day, so I could actually try her out for Extreme Alliance Battle. So... Here we are, um, and anyway, we have uh, Spider-Man 2099 for his uh, leadership, ignore dodge by 50%, um, then we have Spider-Man here for a team-up bonus, gives us a little bit of attack speed, which is nice, um, and also Spider-Man is a striker for X-23, um, he is a when-hit striker though, so let's see, so the other options that are going to be uh, probably okay for X-23 is going to be Rogue is another good option, or wait, no, she was a one-hit striker as well, so, but Rogue is a striker when hit, uh, then who else we got on here, Silk is a striker when, um, when hit as well, and then I think down here we have a few of the good strikers, or the strikers when attacking, are going to be Squirrel Girl, so if you have her at tier 2, she might be a good option as well. Um, she does give you a little bit of skill cooldown and something else, I believe, what was it? Uh, skill cooldown and dodge, if you use uh, Squirrel Girl. And then uh, Gamora was another when attacking striker. So, we'll see how much um, X-23 gets hit while doing this, or if we can chain together her iframes uh, effectively or not. So... I am going to be trying to figure out the skill rotation just right now because I don't know a good skill rotation for her yet. Um, I'm going to see if we can link together maybe all of her iframes so that we can keep our evasion rate up for the meteors, but uh, we will see how well that works. All right, so here we go. All right, let's go ahead and switch over. And I don't have an obelisk on her yet, so she does not have a damage proc obelisk or anything like that right now. Okay, so that's not too bad. Okay, so did get guard broken there. Yeah, so if I try to add the second skill in between those, I do get guard broken, so immune to guard break would definitely help for that part. But if I stick to just the uh, fifth, fourth, and third skill, we'll I have a tiny bit of uh, cooldown right there that I've got to wait for. So yeah, I kind of would like to add that second skill in. I think to add the second skill in, though, I'm going to need... Um, immune to guard break if I want to keep up the evasion. Ooh, getting a little laggy here. My phone just does not like Extreme Alliance Battle. And I did get guard broken that one time there when I was um, entering the third skill, so right before the iframe happened. So it does look like you would actually want to put immune to guard break on her if you're going to be using her for extreme alliance battle or just get used to, um, yeah, or get used to uh, timing your skills really well, pretty much. So actually, yeah, I might actually put immune to guard break on her now just for this fact. Um, I'm still not sure if she's going to be um, uh, super good for um, speed extreme alliance battle here, but she's doing pretty good for not having um, a damage proc obelisk on her so she might be able to compete pretty competitively uh, definitely would need her at tier 2 to really um, see if she's going to put up a high enough score but um, from what I've been seeing right here it looks like she's going to do really well for um, extreme alliance battles so especially if you haven't uh, built up your quicksilver quite yet she could be a nice uh, substitute it looks like she's going to score you 100k pretty easily um, at tier 1, especially if you put a obelisk on her, so she shouldn't have any issues there. And, um, yeah, if I had the immune to guard break, and, and I could chain these skills together a little bit better, 
Uh, we could definitely keep that meteorite evasion up for 100% of the time, so she will have that going for her as well. Alright, so yeah, not too bad. Can we even get to 100, uh, 100k without having a damage proc? Come on, you can do it, X23. I don't want to have to quit out. <laughs> I want all my rewards. I have not done um, the Extreme Alliance battle yet, so that's why I'm trying to get to 100k. Oh, looks like we're going to have to exit out here, so I will catch up to you guys in a second to wrap up this uh, rank up. Alright, so let's go ahead and wrap this up here. So, X23, she's looking pretty good to me. I do like the character. She seems like uh, she's got a lot going for her because she does have two very powerful iframes on the 4th and 5th skill. And they do seem to do quite a bit of DPS. Um, the 3rd skill having an iframe as well helps out with survivability. The 3rd, uh, the 2nd skill has a lot of movement, so she has a really nice uh, kit for her skills right here. Uh, she just, of course, doesn't have anything like um, a guard or anything like that, but her passive kind of takes care of her survivability for her, giving her a nice 5% um, heal every second. Uh, so same as Wolverine, so if you have a uh, recover rate obelisk on her, she's going to be... Quite, she'll still be quite hard to kill, but uh, since she is a speed character, she doesn't have super high defense, and she doesn't have any kind of like damage reduction or anything like that on her, so she will die still pretty quickly in PvP type scenarios, um, unless you have like an invincibility obelisk to help her out a little bit more. But for me personally, I'm going to build her to uh, try Extreme Alliance Battle, and I'm just going to go with damage for her. And of course, even if, even though I have a damage build on her, I am still going to use her in PvP, um, just because. Uh, but anyway, so for the Ovalisk, for me, I'm going to go with something with Immune to Guard Break on it. So I'm thinking I'm just going to put on uh, probably this one right here as like a placeholder until I roll something a little bit better. Or maybe I think I had a... Yeah, I had a kind of more disposable one down here, immune to guard break, cold damage, 100% proc. So I'll probably put that on her just to try her out a little bit more in Extreme Alliance Battle. Ideally, I would like um, immune to guard break with recovery and damage proc. Um, if I wanted to use her only for um, Extreme Alliance Battle, then I'd want to ignore dodge on there as well. But I kind of want that recovery for the increased survivability to kind of make her a little more balanced for um, all game modes. But that's pretty much what I'm going to do for her. If you're not going to use her in Extreme Alliance Battle, if you already have that taken care of, uh, then I definitely think that she can get by without um, Guard Break Immunity. So if you do have something, I don't know, like... Um yeah, like this Ovalisk here, recovery max HP and a damage proc would be nice, or if you have a recovery max HP with a uh, invincibility on it, I think those would be very useful for her as well. Um, but anyway, that's just my thoughts on the Ovalisk there. Of course, we already went over the others, the ice weight and skills there. So that's probably going to do it for this uh, first look at X23 here. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and of course I will catch you in the next one.